Hi, I've clicked onto the Tropical Tidbit for Monday, August 29th, 2016. The thoughts expressed in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please always consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office. Well, starting off with Tropical Depression 8 here, we still see this spinning vigorously uh, southeast of Cape Hatteras, uh, but as the recon plane flew in there earlier, didn't really find all that strong of a circulation, and thus this has not been upgraded to a tropical storm. But we do see that the shear has lessened a little bit. We had very strong southeasterly shear over the storm yesterday. This has lightened a little bit as this upper level low near South Carolina has begun to back westward uh, farther away from the storm. And so we now see convection firing a little bit closer to the center of circulation. And so as these bursts continue periodically, uh, some strengthening is possible, and this may bring tropical storm conditions pretty close uh, to Cape Hatteras and the Outer Banks of North Carolina before turning out toward the northeast. And that's what the NHC forecast shows here with a tropical storm warning for portions of the coast and a close approach uh, with the track and then a turn quickly out to the northeast after that. So perhaps a window on Tuesday when tropical storm conditions will impact the coastline but it will not be a very prolonged event and the system is not expected to make a direct landfall. Uh, moving on to Tropical Depression 9, our concern in the Gulf right now, uh, this continues to have a lot of issues. Uh, we can see the low-level circulation uh, defined in here. Uh, an interesting cloud feature right now is this little curl that you might see on the north northern side. This kind of looks like a center of circulation, but I don't think that's what it is. It looks more like a sub-vortex within a broader circulation in general centered closer to the northwest edge of the convection. If we look at the recon flight, the little curl I just showed you is right here, uh, but the plane found purely southeast winds along this track when it flew through here. Uh, the actual center is farther down here, closer to the northwest edge of the convection, and so this seems to be where the circulation is, but you'll note that it's pretty broad, very light winds in here in general, nothing above tropical storm force, and the pressure is only 1,007, which at this point uh, in the Gulf of Mexico is still pretty high indicating a weak, uh, a weak low in here and really uh, very modest pressure falls uh, indicating something that's broad and still somewhat disorganized and uh, it's still dealing with the fact that it's decoupled from its mid-level center. If the surface low is here, the mid-level low is down here over western Cuba, they're still not in the same location. We keep talking about this but it's been dealing with this decoupling for a, a full week now and this remains an issue. Now previously it was the northerly shear that had pushed all of this convection off toward the south. That northerly shear has now kind of switched direction. That's back here, uh, but the, the storm has moved out of the way now toward the west. And now if you look at the cirrus clouds out here, you see them moving from southwest to northeast. So the shear direction has changed. Now yesterday when we looked at this, uh, the clouds were not moving very much in here and the shear was pretty light over the central gulf, but today you see they're moving a little bit from southwest to northeast, so there is now still still some shear. It has not gone to zero. It is a little bit lighter though, and this could allow, as the system uh, eventually moves out into the central gulf here, uh, could allow uh, some additional organization of the system, but there will still be some shear, and so that will uh, continue to make it struggle uh, in vertically stacking with its mid-level center. And it may still be stuck with forming a brand new one if it can get convection, but right now there is no convection to the northwest of the system, and that will remain a problem uh, for the next little while. Here's the water vapor imagery again uh, showing kind of the shearing flow. We have one upper level low, a second upper level low, and then around both of these, kind of connecting them together is a southwest flow over the central gulf here. This will be the shear that uh, TD9 will have to deal with as it moves into this area over the next few days. Again, the shear will not uh, be lowering to zero, but will instead just be shifting directions and lightening a little bit here. So we'll continue to deal with that as it moves toward the northwest. Uh, so here's the European forecast out to Thursday morning, showing the storm moving into the Big Bend region of Florida, which is now uh, in good agreement amongst most of the model solutions uh, that this is the general region where a landfall will occur. You can see most of the strong winds at 5,000 feet here are off to the right of the track to the southeast of the center. This is generally true of weak storms that move up and turn northeast into Florida. This is normally the wet and windy side of the storm. The stronger it gets, the more this can wrap around toward the northern side of the storm, uh, but that greatly depends on what it's doing right at landfall. If it's strengthening at landfall, we might get some uh, more intense conditions toward the northern semicircle of the circulation, uh, but that will be something we won't know for sure until uh, the day uh, that it is making landfall on Thursday here. 
So here's the GFS as well, and this is a little bit farther back on Wednesday morning, so it comes out into the central gulf. Uh, the field that I'm showing in shading here is the precipitable water, so basically moisture. These uh, dark blues and purples indicate lots of convection and moisture, and uh, you can see that uh, the yellows and greens, most of the dry air, still up here near the North Gulf Coast. It's not a particularly dry situation west of the storm, but the big issue here seems to be the large-scale flow. If you look at uh, the wind field here with these wind bars, you can see that it's kind of elongated out toward the northeast here. It's not a very circular situation. There's kind of this elongated trough out toward northeast Florida, and this is being induced because pressures are being lowered near Jacksonville and the vicinity because of this upper level low uh, that is backing to the west. This will impose a defluent flow aloft over this general region. Uh, this causes uh, air to leave and pressures to fall, and when that happens, you get this trough extending out like a finger here from the tropical storm and uh, this is not very good for a weak storm because it makes it hard for the circulation to tighten up and for convection to fire on all sides of the system when it is elongated in a kind of ovular shape like this. This is not particularly conducive. In addition, this flow coming out of the Caribbean into it, this inflow channel, is a kind of anticyclonically or clockwise curved in here. This is in the opposite sense to what you want the curvature to be. If the background uh, has this clockwise curvature to it, that again does not aid a weak system tightening up with strong spin. Uh, so this is a, a couple of things about the flow in general that may continue to limit uh, TD9 as it moves out into the central gulf. Even if shear is a little bit lighter, this favors still convection to linger on the southeast side of the system, but the northwest side really doesn't have any way to generate convection right now, and it may remain that way for the next day or two. A couple of things change, though, once this starts moving northeast into the Big Bend region of Florida. We'll see this start moving up, and uh, by Thursday afternoon here, what we have is you can still see it's eastern weighted. Most of the dark blues and purples here indicating convection are to the east of the low center, which is southwest of Apalachicola. But a couple of things have changed. One is that the system is now moving northeast after moving northwest before, so it is now moving in the same direction as the southwesterly shear. Remember, the shear is coming out of the southwest over the gulf right now. If the system is moving in the same direction as that shear, it can alleviate some of the negative impacts of the shear. Uh, so as it turns toward Florida, it may be able to fight that shear a little bit better. And the second thing is that there's some dry air uh, coming down now in this yellow around the back side of the system uh, from the north gulf coast, and this may start to get wrapped in as the system moves toward the Big Bend and could potentially get entrained into the circulation, which would uh, limit its ability to intensify right as it's making landfall. Finally, though, uh, there's one more thing going on. As this trough comes down, uh, it is generating a jet streak, an area of very fast flow from southwest to northeast over the mid-Atlantic states. The entrance region to this jet, that is the region where this air is speeding up aloft as it moves from southwest to northeast, is sinking down toward where the tropical depression is as it's making landfall in the Big Bend. And when this entrance region gets close, this is an area of a strong divergence. In other words, air is leaving uh, this area and can cause pressure falls, allowing the system to strengthen as it's moving uh, toward that ent entrance region of the jet. So occasionally this can overcome the negative effects of shear and dry air and allow intensification of a storm as it's racing toward the northeast in this kind of a situation. And so there is a chance uh, that this tries to intensify a little bit right as it's making landfall and then moving out potentially into the southwest Atlantic off of the Carolinas where it could continue to intensify over the ocean, but at that point it would likely move out away from the coast. So this is the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center, again showing a continued west-northwest track for the next day or so, and then a slow bend to the north and then northeast and accelerating toward the Big Bend area of Florida due to that trough coming down from the north, and then it crosses over into the southwest Atlantic. Uh, the cone still includes portions of the southeast coastline, so we could still see a track that if it shifts left even a little bit, we could have adverse conditions uh, impacting Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina as well uh, in the longer term, but there are still some uncertainties in the longer term track here. Uh, but there is pretty high confidence that the Big Bend area of Florida somewhere in here is going to get a landfall from the system. Most of the impacts will probably be southeast of the center. A torrential rains, flooding may be a problem, and strong winds will likely all be to the right of the track. But again, if it is strengthening a little bit due to some of the reasons we talked about, as it's making landfall, some of those conditions could wrap around to the north side of the track. And so portions of the Florida panhandle may still uh, receive tropical storm-like conditions if the storm is sufficiently intense 
as it comes in here. Right now, the National Hurricane Center does have it intensifying uh, to a storm with winds of up to 65 miles per hour as it makes landfall here. So a moderate to strong tropical storm is expected. But due to the limiting factors we talked about, significant intensification due to a strong hurricane is not expected right now. Uh, but this is going to be causing problems, especially to the right of track. So overall, again, quick recap, TD8 approaching Cape Hatteras, but then turning out a brief window in which it may bring tropical storm conditions to the coast will occur on Tuesday, and warnings are up for the Outer Banks. And TD9 continues to be rather broad and weak today, not really intensifying yet, continues to struggle, uh, as we've talked about over the last week, and it will likely uh, continue to have uh, limiting factors imposed upon it as it moves through the Gulf. Some intensification is possible uh, as it moves toward the northeast, toward the Big Bend of Florida, and tropical storm conditions are likely to affect the Florida Peninsula and perhaps the Florida Panhandle uh, going into Thursday and Friday. Uh, but we'll keep a close eye on these systems and uh, keep tuned to the National Hurricane Center for the latest updates. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.